In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own web portfolio for free using a static template in GitHub pages. Hey, my name is Ronald. This is my channel where I talk about coding, software engineering, career advice, entrepreneurship, and also my life in general. If this is something that you're interested in, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you won't miss out on any awesome videos. So let's get into it. This video is for anyone who's trying to make a web developer portfolio especially for students who are building their own web portfolios for jobs. Also for anyone who wants to show off their technical skills and experiences in a consolidated manner. Also for those who are late to the game, who don't want to develop their own portfolios from scratch and don't want to spend money on hosting. I actually got inspired to make this video from a media article and it inspired me to make this video about what we're going to be creating today so first off we want to get into the prerequisites of this project that we're going to be building today you want to make sure you have a github account you're going to also have git and also have a co-editor or a text editor that you of your choice i'm going to be using visual studio code for this one but you can pick any one that you want and all of the resources will be in the description below so make sure you go down and also all the other steps to complete this project will be in the description below. So make sure you guys check that out and enjoy the video. So the first step we're going to be doing is downloading the template. So I downloaded this template from this themes.thirdwavemedia.com website. And essentially it just gives you a whole bunch of static templates. They have options of, you know, paying for the licenses for your own purposes and but essentially i chose the freebies for just to make it like a really cheap project to do so they built these templates with some bootstrap in mind so when you think of bootstrap you can think of a framework that's going to be very responsive so regardless of what screens you're on desktop tablet or mobile is going to be responsive to those different screens so these templates use these this framework in order to be responsive for those different platforms. So I chose this developer template because it was cool, one, and also it was free. I had this little footer thing that is at the very bottom of it, which is not a problem because I like to give credit where it's due. And essentially it just links back to this site. So we're gonna click this download button and then essentially we're gonna download this static template. I'm gonna place it in my document web projects directory. You can place it anywhere you want to, where you feel comfortable. But yeah, I'm gonna place it in this directory. All right, step two, we're gonna put the files into a repo. So first off, we gotta extract that zip file in that directory. Now we're gonna open up the unzip folder. There will be two folder directories once you go into that. There's gonna be one for Mac OS and just a regular one that says developer dash v 2.5 and that's just the regular windows files so we're going to go into this one you don't have to worry about the other one that's for mac users the mac users you can essentially follow the same process as we're going through this but we're going to be doing windows today so once you go into that second directory of the developer dash v 2.5 then we're going to copy all the contents of that particular file directory and then we're going to put it into somewhere else Next, we're going to create our own folder. I'm going to call my folder softwarejournal.github.io. And that's just something that I created for this particular project. And we're going to paste the contents that we had from that other folder. We're going to paste that into here. Now we're going to go to our GitHub account and we're going to create our repository. We're going to name that repo with the name convention username.github.io. And for my particular case, my username is software journal. So I'm gonna put softwarejournal.github.io. This is in order to create a GitHub page and you're gonna see later on. We're gonna keep the settings as they are, keep it public, and then we're just gonna click create repository. After you press that create repo, it's gonna give you a couple of options to get your repo going. So we're gonna be using a second option, slightly modified, but it's gonna be looking something like this. Because we're in Windows, we're gonna type CMD in the file address bar, and that's gonna bring up our terminal. After that, we're gonna type the git init on the command line, and this is gonna initialize your 
repository, your local repository, I should say. Then we're gonna do the git at dot or period in order to stage our files in order to get ready for a commit to push. So while editing this video, I noticed I didn't do the git commit. So I'm just gonna add that note. Before we start committing and pushing, we're gonna actually create a branch. It's gonna be a git branch dash capital M and then main, we're gonna call this branch main. And this is gonna create a main branch on your local repo of all the changes that you just stage. Because our local repo don't have a remote repo to actually push to, we're gonna add this particular command. I'm not gonna say the whole entire command, but essentially it's git remote and add origin. And pretty much it just adds an origin linkage from the local repo to the remote repo in order to push those changes that you have on your local. Lastly, we're gonna push our main branch to the remote repository. So we're pushing all our changes from local to our remote by copying and pasting this command. All right, step three, now we're gonna review our site because now we push our changes from our local to our remote and essentially this is how we're going to be doing that so you're going to do a refresh on your github page and now you're going to see the files that were in your local to the remote repository and yeah we we pretty much have the files that we need there in order for our site to work next you're going to go to your settings you're going to scroll down to the github pages section and this is where you're going to set the source of your of your github page to the main branch and this automatically is going to set your index as the entry point for your site. So automatically when you set your main branch, it should only be one index.html file and it's going to automatically use that as the entry point for your website. So after you click save, then you can click on that your site is published. Click on that link and then you should have your site up and running. So this is essentially how the site looks with the with no modifications. All right, so that's nice, that's nice. All right, step four, we're gonna modify our site. So I already took the liberty of actually modifying this beforehand. So you guys don't have to like see me take out lines, move lines, type in stuff, all that stuff. So essentially I already added my own content. So the images and the text is all there. I'm just gonna copy and paste it from the directory that I'm holding it into the local repository and then completely wipe out the, the stuff that I have there and paste in that content that I modified the template with. All right, final step. Last step of all, we're gonna push our changes. And this is gonna be a workflow as you continue to you know work on your website. You can also see your website locally and test out your changes there before you actually push to your you know remote repository. Yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. But today we're just gonna be pushing our changes to remote and checking our changes from there. So I'm gonna go over my basic Git workflow. So first we're gonna do a Git add, which adds all your files and changes. Then we're gonna do our Git commit with our message that we're gonna have. And pretty much this is just a message. So when you go back into your repository, you can see what changes that you made during that commit. And lastly, we're gonna do a Git push which is gonna push our local changes to our remote repository. So if you're going back to the site and you're seeing if like there's any changes, sometimes your browser is caching some stuff when you hit the refresh button. So you have to clear your cache. So first you gotta to go to your, you know, clear data and then, you know, click that little button if you're using Chrome and just clear your data from there. And when you go back to your site and you can hit a refresh and your changes and modifications will show. So this is something that you're constantly gonna have to do, especially if you're doing web development in order to remove the old cache images and text. Then here are my modifications to the template. So if you ever get a chance, check out my repo for this particular project. And it is probably, is more likely gonna be under softwarejournal.github.io. And you can see what changes I actually did to modify my template to 
fit the needs that I need to fit. So there's one more last thing that I do recommend changing with this template. So later on down the line, you might have troubles with it. For instance, I had a troubles with the GitHub activity widget that came with it towards the end of the page. And essentially it was like all black. And the reason why it had that problem is that it was taking just a fixed version of that repository because essentially all of your other stuff, the assets and stuff is at a fixed version of that software or that package. And I'm not exactly sure why it threw the error, but one of the ways I fixed that was to get the latest from the GitHub repository uh, documentation, which is it shows where it gets that documentation in the template. You just gotta read through the comments. And so I went to that particular site, pulled the latest from that particular repository and added on the link for the CSS and also on the JavaScript. So that's pretty straightforward. Another thing too, when you know using that widget, I do recommend using the responsive parameter on that particular widget because as it goes into mobile and everything, your widget will kind of correspond to that size of that screen and it's just gonna look better because if you don't have that, then it'll, it'll just look kind of haywire. And also lastly, there's also the same thing with the whole fixed version of that package. There's also a fixed version for that Bootstrap. So currently right now we have Bootstrap 5. This particular template is using Bootstrap 4, which is no problem. And so if you want to get the latest Bootstrap configurations and everything, um, you will have to either you know download uh, that static file again and remodify that CSS and JavaScript there, or you can just you know put a link on your index.html and have it directly pull when that page loads. Yeah, that's essentially it. You will get the most updated Bootstrap version, or you can just set it at a particular version that way too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's been a lot of time working on this video. I feel like these tutorials are way more challenging than a lot of other stuff because you gotta do a lot of cutting and editing and cropping and everything. But let me know if you guys actually enjoy this type of content. If you guys want more of it, send down in the comments below, hit this like video up. And if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe if you want more of this content. So until next time, peace.